What's up? Greetings to you in Jesus' name. It is a huge privilege to speak to you this way. And I just want to commend you for the wonderful way that you are pressing on in these times of the pandemic lockdown, three months into the lockdown, you've done exceptionally well. So thank you for pressing on. I know we do the same. We are trusting God for his strength. Also want to commend you as a church for the wonderful way that you stood with Shannon and Anaya when they lost our dear Farah. You have reached out to them. You have reached out to the extended family. You have helped each other in those times. So well done to you as well. So thank you so much for giving me this privilege to bring God's word to you. So today I want to speak to you from a familiar passage from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. Let me read that for you from the NIV version. Therefore, if everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the word of the Lord. If you observe the language in this passage, it very well resonate with the times that we are living in. What do I mean by the times that we are living in? We are in a pandemic, lockdown, and in the midst of it, we also heard about earthquake. We had threats of cyclone, locusts. People uh, are locked up in the house. Some have lost their job. Some have less pay cut. This is all the times that we are living in. And I just want to take three simple points from this passage that would help us to relook at a life afresh. So, the first one Jesus is a treasure for your heart, not a tool for your life. Jesus is a treasure for your heart and not a tool for your life. Trial and sufferings reveals what we really trust. When we dwell in Christ, that's point number three, we dwell secure. That's uh, um, three, three points that I want to dwell on. The first one, Jesus is a treasure for your hearts, not a tool for our life. The passage begins by saying, if you hear these words of mine, now, words of mine which also talks about few other things Jesus spoke about. So for example, this is the final thing of the Sermon on the Mount which is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. If you read that passage, you will clearly understand that Jesus talks about a number of things in the Sermon on the Mount, but then he gives three warnings towards the end of chapter 7. The number one warning, the first one is a narrow and the wide gate. Um, the second warning is a tree and its fruit. And this is the third warning, a wise and a foolish builder. And he said, if you hear these words of mine, what are these words of Jesus that we want to talk about? Why the words of Jesus is so important? See, brothers and sisters, it is important because the Bible says he is the word of God. In the Gospel of John, it says in the beginning was the word and the word, uh, was be word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what it is talking about Jesus Christ. So it is not like the words that you hear from 
philosophers or religious people the words of jesus is eternal it is the creative word it is a word that became creation it was a word that actually spoke and creation came into being it is the same word brought miracles it is the same word that brought healing it is the same word it says it is going to come back one day this word will return brothers and sisters in the in the uh, um in the book of hebrews um this word is beautifully put up uh, let me read that for you from hebrews chapter 1 verse to 3 i'm reading from niv version in the past god spoke to us to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through him also he made the universe the sun is the radiance of god's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word sustaining not is a word sustaining things by his powerful word brothers and sisters let me give you a quote from tim keller he says this most christians are no way nearly or deeply immersed in the scripture and theology as they are in their respective social media bubbles and news feed bubbles to be honest i think the evangelicals are much more influenced by the msnbc and the liberal twitter and the conservative christians are much more influenced by the fox news and their particular groups and they both live in those things 8 to 10 hours a day they attend church service once a week for some twice a month they are not immersed in the kind of biblical theological studies to nuance any of that stuff tim keller said that and i think he is making a point we how much time we spend on listening to twitter social medias and other bubbles that we live in 8 to 10 hours is his observation in a in a day and how much time do we spend in shaping our life through the word of god my aim is not to actually bring you into any condemnation this morning brothers and sisters my aim is to actually to go back to the fundamentals especially as i mentioned earlier the language in this passage resonate for the times that we are living in why it is important to go back to the word of god because it is unlike anything that we hear today when we open the television channel the news channel or the other feed that coming newspaper and social media they are not building us up most of the time and we spend a lot of time listening to that the foundations are questioned at this time a uh, few months ago earlier on in the lockdown a friend of mine a pastor from us called me and he said we know what do you think about the times that we are living in what is your take what is the, what do you sense in the lord we exchange conversation and i have said i feel these days god is testing our foundation is a very what we are experiencing what 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 the language of what we uh, you know in this passage and what resonate in our life is actually a real test of how and where we built our life on some years ago there was a building in brewley collapsed in the afternoon number of people were buried and died in that crash and soon after that the municipal corporation issued a notice a circular a mandatory circular saying that every building that has completed 15 years must do a fresh structural audit before that they didn't have that uh, policy but they instituted something to say that every building has to go a structural undergo a structural audit those who completed 15 years why to check whether the foundations the beams and the columns are well uh do it okay and our building completed 15 years have completed 16 years at that time we had to do a structural audit and we were not worried but it was it when the report came they said your structure is strong that brought comfort to us why because it's built well brothers and sisters a question we need to ask ourselves have you built your life 
well. So there are, there are different um, things that are coming to shape our life in these days. People are asking very fundamental question. Where is God? Is God, why isn't God answering the prayer? Is God active in this time? Has God allowed this pandemic to come? Or um, this is the end of the world. How do we answer these questions? We don't have an answer for every question because none living on planet Earth knows what can give a clear answer. But we have, we have, we have um, clear indication from the word of God, not from news feeds, another thing, from the word of God, what is happening around the world. We have indication where things are heading and it is important that we build our life on the word of God in times like this. See, building on immovable foundation starts with hearing the word of God. See, both these people, the wise and the foolish builder, were, they start off on a privilege. They start off on a privilege by they're able to hear the word of God. Brothers and sisters, we are in that privilege. We can hear the word. Look at the number of different versions of Bible that is available on digital format. And the number of Christian books and the various um, kinds of Bibles that are stocked up in your library. But the fact is, people aren't spending too much of time in reading the Word of God. They are not spending enough of time in building their life on the Word of God. My aim is not to bring condemnation this morning. As I said earlier, my aim is to actually help you to reassess your life Relook at your life and to see where you built your life on. Now, this passage is not necessarily talking about who is wise and who is foolish. My aim is not to... I know I have preached from this passage in the past talking about who is wise and foolish. But this morning, my aim is actually to say that two different... Trying to bring a completely different perspective. I believe this passage is more than just talking about just who is wise and who is foolish. I believe... One person, the foolish person is actually a religious person and the wise person is actually a true Christian. So let's look at that. A Christian, like I mentioned, this is actually the culmination of the uh, Sermon on the Mount. In a way, Jesus is actually bringing these three warnings to the end of chapter 7 saying that if you have forgotten everything, he didn't say that, but he's saying, he's alluding that and saying, if you have forgotten everything that I taught you before, Put your focus on these three things. And then he ends with the, the wise and the foolish builder. So a Christian would look at or read the Sermon on the Mount and knows apart from Christ and what he has done, I cannot treat people justly. Whereas a religious person would say, I will do all things correctly to be accepted by Jesus. A Christian would just focusing on anchoring his life on Christ. I have nothing apart from Christ. Hallelujah. Right? The question I want to ask you, I want to leave it with you. Is Christ Jesus is a tool for your life or a treasure? Many a times we use Jesus as a tool. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters, with all due respect. Jesus is not to be your means to a comfortable life. I know he blesses us, but it should not be seen as a means to a comfortable life. He won't do that for you unless he is the end that you're looking for. Unless it is for the glory of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Brothers and sisters, it is time that we see Jesus. We are not just looking at Jesus as a genie. Rub, rub the lamp and there comes, you know, a blessing. Another time, another blessing. Let's not look at Jesus that way. My second point is trials, trial and sufferings reveals what we really trust. These times that we are living in, it is actually revealing that to us. Friends, everyone is building something. You and I, we are all building something. We are, you are building a life, a career, family, business, success, bank balance, 
We are all building. See what happened in the last three months. All those who put their hope and trust in those things are like, you know, it's almost like a warning coming from Jesus. He's saying that, you know, uh, Jesus warning us against building our life on all those activities that is like building our life on sand. And he is, he is, he is reaffirming his word to us. He says, I am the bedrock. It is me or not me. I am the bedrock. It is me or not me. The writer of Hebrews says that, you know, we are seeing these trials and temptations. We are not seeing the fulfillment of everything, but we see Jesus. Hallelujah. But we see Jesus. And uh, Jesus would remind us what I have done is the most stable thing that you can build your life on. Brothers and sisters, may I just plead with you, especially those who are viewing this message for the first time or a visitor to this site and hearing the word. May I just say that in, when you look around, everything that you put your trust on may be shaking. But if you build your life on Jesus, he has done this for you and I. He didn't come for a bunch of Christians. He came for the whole world. That's why his word says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So build our life on Jesus. It says the, the, the foolish man, what he built on. It says, you know, the only the storm will prove what we built on. So in these days, what we are facing is the kind of storm that you're facing in your life. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, build your life on Jesus Christ. And it says the man who built the house, both had the privilege of hearing, both had the proximity and they both built something. They both built identical house, as the Bible says. And when the storm came, the house that built on sand came with a great crash great crash. Many who put their trust in the worldly things, their hopes have been shattered. It came with a great crash. The entertainment uh, field, the political field, the financial field, the sports field, all those who put their trust and hope in those things, it came with a great crash. And Jesus is actually saying, as Christians, the idea of greatness is not something that we must pursue. You know, Adam and Eve, they had great, they, they were wonderful. They, they had all the privileges. They, had, they could interact with God. They could fellowship with God, but they wanted to be greater. And as they pursued, they, they listened to the serpent instead of God. Instead of going after God's word, they listened to the serpent. And guess what happened? It came with a great crash. It was not just only they were separated from the garden, put out of the garden. It was a place of plenty and um, uh, fullness. They were, they were put out of the presence of God. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, let us not pursue greatness. So you may ask, what do you think we should pursue? Then we know. All right. I think as a pastor, I want my church to do well. I'm sure your pastor would desire, your pastors would desire the same for your church. But let me say this to you. I don't want, I, I wanted our church to be great, but I think I'm changing my position. More than being a great church, I want to be a church who's faithful to God. More than just uh, pursuing anything else, I want to be a church that pursues the greatness of God. We don't want to be a great church, we want to be a faithful church. Let us pursue humility. We want to be, we want to be a God-dependent church. We want to be a God-dependent church. So let me recap that for you before I move to my third point. First, Jesus is a treasure for your life, uh, for your heart or a tool. Second, trial and sufferings reveal what we really trust. And third, when we dwell in Christ, we dwell secure. That's my final point. David in the Old Testament. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Jesus, when he asked uh, his disciple, who do, who do you think the people say I am? 
Peter said, some say you are a prophet, some say you are a teacher. But Jesus said, you want to press the point harder and said, who do you say I am? And this is what Peter said, you are the Christ, son of the living God. And Peter, uh, Jesus said, well done, Peter. That is from my father. By the way, I will build my church. You are Peter. On this, I will build my church. What is that? You are the Christ, son of the living God. That truth, on that truth alone, the church will be built on. And that truth alone, our life must be built on. And that's why it is, it is said, you know, I will build my church on this truth and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against this against it on the contrary on the other hand it is not that you know on that truth on that truth you will also find the gates of Hades not only prevail but it, it will prevail the gates of Hades yeah it will make advance into that place let me conclude with this you know Paul's wonderful writing from from the book of Philippines chapter 3 verse 8 to 10 I'm reading from the ESV version let me read that for you indeed I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings become like him in his death. That is Paul's conclusion of his life. He built his life on Christ. Brothers and sisters, Paul had a conversion and he built his life on Christ and nothing shook him till his till this till the last breath that would be my prayer for you for me and everyone who is hearing this word watching this message let us build our life on Christ storm will come no, just because you built on a, a rock foundation doesn't mean that no storm storm will come floods will come but when you build your life on Christ when you life on the rock foundation it will help you stand. It will remain strong. Brothers and sisters, therefore, build your life on Christ and you will remain strong. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Amen.